Hey guys, sorry we missed you last night, but it was raining, it was sleeting, and it was freezing. So we thought it best to let you stay at home, sit by the fire, watch the Olympics or something on Right Now Media so that you were safe, so that you were sound, so that nothing happened to you. But with that said, we did want to share with you some important information uh, regarding one student ministry. But before we get to those unique announcements, I wanted to share with you a little devotional. No, this isn't the sermon I planned to do last night. This message is something unique just for you today, this afternoon. And I wanted you to hear it from my heart to your ears. So if you would, take about 10 minutes, listen to this message, and let it impact your heart. Last night, because we weren't here at One Student Ministry, I had the opportunity to sit at home. I was cuddled up by a fire, felt great. It was cold outside. But thankfully, we have a fireplace at home, so I was nice, I was cuddled up, and you know what I was doing? I was watching the Olympics. Now, I love the Olympics. I hope you do as well. It's very, very fun to watch. We have some amazing athletes here in our country. But last night at about 10.10, I decided to tune in to the women's USA versus Canada hockey game for the gold medal. It almost felt like it was a David versus Goliath kind of moment. Now, it wasn't because the United States have had a clear opportunity to win the game. But Canada beat them three out of the past four Olympics. And so it was a giant. It was a tall task, a tall order that only Team USA could perform. Now, to start the game, we started off hot. We scored a goal in the first period, but then came the Canadians. They put two goals in the back of the net. Almost all seemed lost. It felt like we were destined to repeat the same mistakes of the past, that we would lose to the Goliath once again. But that didn't happen this time. We score a goal with six minutes and 21 seconds remaining left in the game, and then we go into a 20-minute overtime session. Guess what happens? We don't score in overtime, but yet they don't either. So we go to a shootout. After five rounds of the shootout, it's tied. But then the sixth round came. The sixth and final round came. David, Goliath kind of moment. Team USA, they had the last opportunity to put the puck in the back of the net. They do it. They put the puck in the back of the net. They're up one to nothing. And then it's Team Canada's turn. They skate up. They get to the goalie, they shoot, but it doesn't go in. I think you need to see more of this game. So at this time, check out these highlights. The women's gold medal matchup between the United States and Canada. This is Jenner, number 19 for Canada. Dropping it off for a shot by Dahu. It's this is the net, and Rudy gets the stick down. Now takes the return pass with 25 seconds remaining. Warren shoots the fucking score! Hillary Knight setting up in front. Power play goal. 1-0 United States. Burgle gets to the puck. Score! On the deflection. Haley Irwin ties the game at one. The captain. Now Augusta. Taking Augusta down the left wing. Dropping it off the floor. She scores! Two on one, Canada. Two on one, back the other way. Pulat hustling back. Knight drives to the cross. And a punch it by the ball stick of Zamanas. So that's not a penalty. Brianna Decker's down and out. Mary Phillip Pulat just let her have it. She had Nurse on her left. Long pass ahead to Monique Labru. Will we get on Zamanas? She scores! Terrible change by the Canadians. That's why there was so much time and space and really good awareness by Team USA to tie it up. More Lamaroos. Keep putting them out there. And we are headed for a shootout as overtime comes to an end in Pyeongchang. We go round by round. Jocelyn Lamaru. Two goals apiece in the shootout. Lamaru moving in on Zabinas. She beats and scores! Must beat Rooney to keep Canada's hopes alive. She is stopped! 
United States wins gold in Pyeongchang. I like sports because you can see the impossible. Whether it be like the United States of America versus Russia, uh, way back in the day in Lake Placid, when you hear the words, do you believe in miracles? Yes. Or you're down 28-3 to in the Super Bowl. Or you have the Philadelphia Eagles who are going up against Goliath themselves. Sports are powerful because they teach you to never give up. Never lose hope. There's always a chance. I think in our relationship with God, we see that same thing. When the odds are stacked up against us, it is easy to throw in the towel or quit or give up or say, I can't do this. But if we have faith in our God, if we trust in Him all the days of our life, we can have hope even in the darkest of situations. In David versus Goliath, David had every reason to feel like the underdog. He had every reason to feel like he could not win. He could not make it. He could not defeat the giant. But he knew who his God was. He trusted in his God. He believed in his God. His faith did not waver. So he went into battle with all the courage, with all the faith, and he believed. That's my encouragement today. you got to believe. Not that you can overcome the outcome, even though you can. You've got to believe in the one you serve and the God that you put your faith in. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 45 through 47 says this. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied this day. The Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by the sword or the spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all all of you, into our hands. Takes a lot of courage for David to make a proclamation like that. But yet, when he did, his God came through. David defeated Goliath. Just like Team USA defeating Canada. Just like the Patriots 28-3 comeback. Just like the Philadelphia Eagles, who have never won a championship in their life, defeating that same Goliath in the New England Patriots. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop fighting. Don't ever lose faith. Why? Because your God is bigger, stronger, and more powerful than anyone we could ever imagine. This was the Lord's battle to face. Not David's, not Goliath's, but the Lord's. And God always comes through. He always comes through. No matter it's, whether it's great odds or the lowest odds imaginable, God always comes through. Remember this, the Lord prevails. His name prevails. His spirit prevails every time. Death itself could not keep the Lord down. That's how powerful your God is. That's how powerful your Savior is. David's belief in the Lord led him to play the underdog role, but yet the underdog can defeat Goliath. We see that over and over in this life. Always remember this. The battle is not yours. The battle over sin is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Don't ever lose faith in Him. Don't lose trust, because you know that He will come through at the right time. Therefore, don't stop following Him. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. you got to believe. you got to believe. Thanks, guys. We will see you again on Sunday. I did want to give you a couple of important announcements that you need to be aware of. First off, this Sunday night, we have connect groups, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. You don't want to miss out on connect groups this Sunday night. Be sure to be there. In addition to connect groups, we do have spring break activities coming up March 12th 
through the 15th, we're going to be going outside and playing some sports because we love sports. Number two, we're going to go play putt-putt at Zone Action Park on Tuesday. Number three, we are going to be right here and watching some movies on Wednesday. And number four, on Thursday, we're going to have a park and picnic day, so be sure that you bring a packed lunch. Let's get outdoors. Let's have some fun. But not only that, March 4th is an important day for those going on a mission trip. As you know, we're going to AIM Atlanta this year. And here's what I ask. If you are going on that missus trip, we need you to provide us with some chili. We're having a chili fundraiser for the entire church, about 250 people, and we need your help. Whether you can pay for the whole trip yourself or you need to raise some extra funds for that, we need everybody to be a part. We have to feed 250 hungry mouths, and we can't do that in one pot alone. So you need to be a part, bring some chili that feeds about 25 to 30 people so that we all can feed everybody who's hungry. And you're going to raise a lot of money by doing so. Those are the announcements today. Be sure to pocket those, remember those, don't forget about those. Thank you. Hey, if you like videos like this and you want to see more videos like this, I encourage you to click subscribe on my YouTube channel. We have these rolling out every week, so be sure to follow us on YouTube.